Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to Bullseye, creating our first iOS application. Now we're almost at the finish line, okay? We've created a fantastic iOS app, we have labels, we have buttons, we have switches, we have a slider, and honestly now it's just a couple of bug fixes and making the app usable. So first thing first is, when I play the application, I'll go ahead and hit check, I can't play the game again unless I restart the application or build it again on Xcode. That doesn't make any sense. I should have a play again button appear once I hit the check button. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. The second thing is let's make our app look beautiful. Right now it's just plain text on a plain white background. There's a lot of ways you can make our app look good. And let's go ahead and play around with adding colors to our iOS application. So first thing first is the play again button. So over here in our object pane, again on the right hand side, let's go ahead and search for a button. And we're gonna add this to the top right corner. So again, you can add it wherever you want. Um, this is not gonna be our final UI guys. I know that you must be thinking that our app looks really bad right now, but don't worry. For our final lecture, we'll definitely play around and make this app look good. So we have a play again button, and this button should only be shown when the chuck button is pressed. It doesn't make sense to see the play again button when I haven't even played the game. Like I have to first play the game, and then once the result is shown, I should be able to play again. So let's go ahead and say hidden is equal to true. So if you go to the caret sign by selecting the play again button at the bottom in the drawing category, we have hidden. Okay, so go ahead and select that. And that means that a play again button will now be hidden. If you run the application, nothing will be shown. Okay, so the next thing is to add this button to our view controller. Okay, it's going to be an IB action. Why? Because we're taking in the user interaction when they hit the play again button. So let's go ahead and add the play again button and action and let's just call it play again function. Fantastic. So now we have a play again function, which is great. But the thing is that the play again button is never going to be shown because you're not unhiding it when the check button is pressed. To unhide and to change the property of the play again button, we have to add it as an IB outlet. So let's go ahead and scroll up to our view controller and control click over here and add an IB outlet called play again button. Okay. So now that we've added the outlet, we can go ahead and modify the property, which is, is hidden of the button. So when the check value function is pressed, we're going to go ahead and say that at the very end of this, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the spaces at the very end of this, we're going to go ahead and say play again, button dot is hidden is equal to false. Okay. So the is hidden property basically tells us that, Hey, is our button actually being shown or not? If we set this equal to true, then a button will remain hidden. If we set it equal to false, it will go ahead and show the play again button. Now, if the play again button is shown and the user clicks it, this function is run, the play again function. When the user hits play again, many things have to happen. First of all, the slider has to reset back to the normal position. Okay, it has to go back to 50. So we're gonna go ahead and say that num slider dot um, set value, okay? and our value should be 50.0 and animated should be false. Okay, it should just restart back to 50. Now, the second thing is we need to make our label back to what it normally was, which is move the slider to and then a random number. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is copy this code, command C, and bring it down over here. So now we have random number is equal to int arc for random uniform 101 and num label text is equal to move the slider to random number, okay? So all we did is we reset this label, the header label that we see in our app, and we're bringing this back. So now we're gonna go ahead and reset it to a new number. The next thing is to hide this label. The whoops, you missed, try again later. This label doesn't need to be shown once you play again. So we're gonna, gonna go ahead and say result label, result label dot is hidden is equal to true. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hide this label. We don't want to show it. Fantastic. So I think that's it. We have reset the label. We have um, made the is result label hidden. Another thing is we need to hide the play again label. So once you hit play again, you shouldn't be able to click play again again unless you actually run the application. So let's go ahead and say play again button is equal to um, dot is hidden is equal to true. Fantastic. Now one thing I'm noticing here guys is if we hide the result label, we're not making it um, reappear anywhere in our code. So when the user hits check value, 
we need the result label to show up again. So over here, we're going to go ahead and say result label dot is hidden is equal to false. All right. So quick recap of the code before we run this. All we did is we created a play again button. We added it as an IB action and an IB outlet. Okay. When the user hits the play again button, we want to reset all of the main code. We want the label to get reset. We want it to generate a new random number. We want our slider to be back to 50. We want our result label to be reset and we want to hide it so that it doesn't show the result when the user hasn't played the game. Okay. So there's all this basic stuff you need to remember when you hit the play again button. And then all we did is we said that, Hey, if the check value or if the check value is pressed, then we're going to go ahead and say play again button is hidden is false. Fantastic job. Let's go ahead and run this and let's see our play button at work. So here is our simulator and let's give it a few seconds. Build succeeded. Fantastic. Okay. So immediately we do not see the play again button, which is exactly what we wanted. Now we're going to go ahead and move the slider to 19. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that this is 19 hit check. Great. So whoops, you missed try again later. That's okay. But now we have the play again button. So it showed up as soon as we had the check hit play again. And now if you notice, move the slider to 19 again. So it turns out that was purely by luck guys. Surprisingly, when we hit check and then when we hit um, play again, it got 19 again. So I went and just tested it out a bit. And it turns out that if you do hit play again, you are getting a random number, which is fantastic. The label is being hidden. And when we hit check again, once we move it to let's say 34, we now see the new result label. You were right on point. Bullseye. Fantastic job. So in this video, we covered adding a play again button, getting its functionality working. And before we end this lecture, let's go ahead and modify some of our UI elements. Right now for our result label, we currently have a label that doesn't look too good. Okay. It doesn't really have much of an appeal. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and give it a background color. So if you are right, for example, if our result label is you were right, I want to give my label a background color of green. And if I was wrong, then I want to give my background or my label a background color of red. So what I'm going to do is over here in our result label text, after I'm right, I'm going to go ahead and say result label dot background color is equal to UI color dot red. Okay. And all this means is that, Hey, if I was right, actually technically it should be green. So if I was right, then I want to change the background color of my label to be green. And in this case, if I was wrong, then I'm going to go ahead and say that my result label dot background color should be UI color dot red. Okay. So in specifying colors in Xcode and Swift, you basically specify the UI color, which is an object. And then Apple has a standard number of colors readily available. So UI color dot black, blue, brown, various colors you can automatically select. And then if you want a specific color, you can go ahead and in it with, with a specific RGB value. So red, green, blue, etc. So UI color dot red, if you were wrong, now let's go ahead and copy this exact same code. So UI color dot green over here for our second part if in case the exact label is indeed, or the exact switch is selected. So let's go ahead and copy this over here. Great. And let's run this. So now once we hit the check button, we should go ahead and see that our label, our result label over here should have a green or red background. So let's go ahead and open up our simulator, move this letter to 68. I think that's 68 hit check. Fantastic. You're right on point bullseye. So again, that's just this nice UI element that we added to our screen. Now it's green or red. Let's go ahead and try this again. So 40 hit check red whoops you missed try again later awesome job guys we covered play again we covered some ui colors great job so our bullseye app is almost completed now one of the things if you guys notice is that our app isn't center aligned right now all the elements on our screen are shifted towards the left a bit even though it's center aligned on our screen and that's why in the next lecture i'll go ahead and cover what are constraints and how do we con uh, set constraints in ios anyways fantastic job guys if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.